I'm Elizabeth Engel, and today I'm doing a presentation on my artist of choice, who is Leonardo da Vinci. So, this man was a really major part of the Renaissance as a whole, and I think what he did during the Renaissance really did affect the outcome of what happened in during the Renaissance. So, who is he? Leonardo da Vinci is an Italian artist. He is known as the Renaissance Man. He has over 100 artworks that he has completed. And, again, he really did change the Renaissance and affected the outcome with what he did during his time period. So, what is the Renaissance? The Renaissance is an era in the 14th through 16th centuries, um, and it is a combination of different art styles, and some of these art styles include humanism, naturalism, and classicism, along with non-religious themes and sculptures. And the Renaissance originated in Europe, mostly staying in the areas within Italy and France. Um, and again, the Renaissance is a, known as like a rebirth. So how was it unique? During the Renaissance, artists really changed their ways that they looked at art. And there are also three different parts of the Renaissance, and this includes the early Renaissance, the middle or high Renaissance, and the late Renaissance. And again, during the Renaissance, many changes did occur, and it was all thanks to one man in particular. So what are some of his works? Da Vinci has a plethora of works that he has made, but these are just some of his more known ones. It includes The Last Supper, Mona Lisa, Lady with an Ermine, Batuous, Rearing Horse and Mounted Warrior, and there's also a lot more to go on with those, but these are just the main ones, and we will talk about these in the upcoming slides. So first off, one of his more known paintings is The Last Supper. Um, it was completed in 1489, which is an example of early Renaissance artwork. What's unique about this painting is it has a sad color palette along with a dark contrast which gives the overall painting a mosaic like feeling and with this becomes comes the feeling of like sadness and despair. Another one of his more fam famous paintings is the Mona Lisa. And this one was completed in 1504, which is an example of high renaissance artwork. And th with this painting came, and it set really high standards for artists in the era and upcoming artists. Now with this painting, there was many artistic changes, and some of these include the use of perspective. And with this specific painting came a triangular composition. And with her turned at a three-quarter pose, it gave a more relaxed and natural feeling to the painting. And now this artwork is one of his most famous art pieces and this thing can sell for up to over a million dollars which shows the value in his artwork. Another one of his artworks is the Battle of Anagari. This one was completed in 1505 which is another example of high or middle renaissance artwork. Now this painting was known as a lost painting, which means they never really found the original artwork, but they know about this painting through his sketchbooks and all of the other stuff he did during his lifetime. And one thing I really like about this painting is the use of contrabasto as well, as you can see the horses and the men going into a battle, which gives it more of an action -y, gives it more gives off an action, kind of like feeling and environment around them. Another one is the Lady with an Ermine. 
Now this painting was completed in 1489, which is an example of early Renaissance artwork. This is another example of a portrait painting, and it is also another great example of contrabass type, because you can see she isn't that much of a stiff figure. You can see her torso is turned, and she also has her hand on the ermine. And this other painting also has a dual contrast with darker colors, so you can kind of see a theme there with Da Vinci's darker color contrasts in his paintings. Another one of his painting ideas is a portrait of a man in red chalk. Now this one was completed in 1512 and is another example of late Renaissance artwork. And what was unique about this painting was it was actually done with red chalk and it's not just the title. Now, with it being done in red chalk, it also comes with a lighter color scheme, which strayed from the original path of darker colors and darker contrasts, which made it really unique in its own self. Another one of his paintings is called Batuous. Now this image I have is a little blurry and faded, and you can't really see it that well, but this one was completed in 1515 is another example of late Renaissance artwork. And it is another great example of contrapposto as well because you can see the man sitting there. He's all relaxed. He's got his leg up on his other leg. He's got his arms down to his sides. And also gives a naturalistic style because in the background there is trees and more of a nature setting. So I think that's another great example of a naturalistic style in his paintings. Another one of his artworks that is called the Flying Machine. This one was completed in 1487, which is an, another example of early Renaissance artwork. Now this specific artwork was more of a blueprint instead of a actual artwork. And I think this one was a really important part of history because it could help with the concept of planes and the idea of a flying vehicle coming up in the future. Another artwork is called The Rearing Horse and Mounted Warrior. This one was created in 1519. It is another great example of late Renaissance artwork. And what's unique about this one is it is actually a bronze sculpture. And I think this one gives off another great example of contrapposto because of the idea of a horse rearing up. And it also gives the feeling of movement because you can imagine what a horse would look like rearing up with a person on top. And I think it's one of his more greater sculptures that he created. So in the end, you can really tell that Da Vinci was really a major part of the Renaissance. And there's a bunch of things that he did during the Renaissance that really did change the outcome. And I believe all of his paintings also did challenge upcoming artists to kind of keep up with him and try and beat him at his own game. So in conclusion, Leonardo da Vinci is a important part of the Renaissance. He has also changed the Renaissance as a whole and his gallery of artwork is a really important part of the era and I believe with his creations like the Mona Lisa, again, really did challenge upcoming artists. And he also did change the way people looked at these paintings. There's my work cited. Thank you.